When it comes to turbocharged sport compact sedans that are affordable, the Hyundai Elantra would have been considered a joke just a few years ago. I mean, think back to the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift movie where Han makes his infamous quote, what, you think I'm gonna let you roll in a Hyundai? Well, it looks like Hyundai may be having the last laugh because this week, as you can see, I'm testing out this beautiful performance blue Hyundai Elantra N. As you guys know, the Elantra N is Hyundai's first ever serious take at challenging direct competitors like the Volkswagen GTI and GLI, Honda Civic SI, and Subaru WRX. It has nearly 300 horsepower under the hood, a standard six-speed manual, and very aggressive styling that's certainly gonna stand out in a sea full of crossovers. Now, I've already had a chance to drive this vehicle out on a track late last year. However, this week, Hyundai has loaned me this lovely six-speed manual transmission model, and we're gonna live with it on a daily basis. We're gonna retest it in terms of its zero to 60 performance and what it's like to live with as a daily driver. And at the end of this video, Video, I'm gonna find out, has Hyundai managed to truly build a serious turbocharged sport compact that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all its direct rivals? Stay tuned to find out. So if you're gonna challenge the best, you better make sure that you come with a powertrain that's equipped to do so. And this is where the Elantra N really spent the big bucks because this car has more horsepower than all of its direct rivals. Now underneath the hood, you have a two liter turbocharged gasoline direct injection four cylinder that we essentially find also under the hood of the Kona N and the Veloster N. Here in the Elantra N, it makes 276 horsepower and 289 pound-feet of torque. Now, if you guys use the overboost function on the dual clutch model, it'll actually give you up to 286 horsepower for up to 10 seconds or 20 seconds, I believe, with that overboost function. If you guys are keeping score, this has more horsepower than all of it, the competitors like the GLI and GTI, the Civic SI, even the Subaru WRX has five less horsepower versus this car. Now, if you start comparing the Elantra N to a Civic Type R or the upcoming GR Corolla or a um, Volkswagen Golf R, this does have less power, but keep in mind, um, those models are technically a class above. This car is priced along more the lines of a Volkswagen GLI and Civic SI, which is why the Hyundai Elantra N is a little bit more of a tweener vehicle. Now, my tester is equipped with the six-speed manual transmission. This car only comes with front-wheel drive. Again, another distinctive difference versus this, or like a Golf R, which is all-wheel drive. Uh, and fuel economy is rated at 22 in the city and 31 on the highway. The, the manual transmission actually gets slightly better gas mileage versus the dual clutch. Uh, Hyundai says performance should be zero to 60 in the low five second range for the dual clutch. We've got the manual, so we'll go ahead and retest that. I'm gonna estimate it'll be a few seconds or a, a few ticks of a couple of a second slower versus the uh, automatic model. Uh, and in terms of the curb weight, the manual is the lighter option. This one here weighs in at around 3,100 pounds, which makes it around two to 300 pounds lighter versus the all wheel drive competition. Now closing the hood, let's go ahead and talk about the very, very in your face polarizing design of the Elantra N. Now I have to admit, when Hyundai first showed this car, uh, in pictures, I was not a fan of the front end and I'm still not a fan of the front end of this car. This one here is painted in the $400 upcharge for performance blue. This is their signature color. And from this angle here, it certainly looks very, very polarizing. We have the signature Hyundai corporate grill here, which is kind of like their cascade grill. It's got a very distinctive end badge there, although I do wish the badges were blacked out. Although there is too much black on the front end of this car. You can see you have the geometric shapes here with the uh, turn signal, which is incandescent that kind of blends into the actual grill. You do have a standard full LED headlights where you have LED low and high beams, LED daytime running lights, no fog lights in this car, but there are definitely some functional grill extent or grill intakes to allow cooling for the turbocharged engine. The one thing I just wish Hyundai did is paint these. These should not have been black. They should have been body colored. And I really suspect a lot of owners are going to end up painting these themselves. It just looks unfinished. It looks like the front of the car is wearing a mask. I think it's a little bit too much. And I would have preferred if Hyundai had just went with the side, the side extensions of the front fascia to be painted. But other than that, it's a very aggressive looking car. Moving around the side profile, you can see this is based on the N3 platform. So it's technically the newest platform compared to something like the Veloster N and the Kona N, which is built on the older platform. And at around 184 inches long, this is uh, about a little bit longer, like an inch or two longer versus most of the competition. You can see the side profile of the Elantra N is also equally polarizing with all those intersecting lines, the geometric shapes. The wheels also are a very busy design. Um, I kind of prefer the wheel a little bit more on the Kona N, but it's certainly very unique. It's a 19 inch wheel. It's wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, a summer performance tire. You have upgraded, I believe those are a 13 inch rotor 
uh, with a red painted caliper. It's not like a twin piston Brembo design, or I'm sorry, a four piston Brembo design, but you can see uh, the brakes have certainly been upgraded, but Hyundai does save a little bit of cost here by not going with like an up upmarket brake manufacturer. Um, they're suspecting you'll do that on your own. And in terms of the suspension, it has been upgraded. We do have adaptive dampers front and rear. The suspension at the back is also independent, which is not something you can find on the lower end Elantras. And then you can see here, there are some red trims and an end badge here along the side skirts to let everybody know this is the high performance model. You have black painted side mirrors with signal repeaters. And then if you guys want a sunroof, it's not available on the manual. You have to go for the dual clutch model to get a sunroof. Uh, so that's part of the $1,500 extra charge. Now looking at the back end of the Elantra, definitely very, very interesting in terms of the design. The spoiler here will certainly get your attention. It's not quite as big as something like the old uh, WRX STI, but it is, a, I believe, a tasteful spoiler. I also like the rear taillight where you have this light bar that kind of connects the two taillights together. It is kind of like an incandescent design for um, the turn signal and it looks like for the reverse light, but the brake light, it looks like it is an LED. Uh, again, the badges back here would have looked better if they were blacked out. There's a very distinctive end badge there to let everybody know. And then the exhaust system, you can see, first of all, the rear diffuser has more of that red. And then you have the signature dual outlet with the large oval tips. And this car is very, very distinctive for its sound. I'll go ahead and fire it up and give it a few revs so you guys can hear it. And the sound of this car is definitely gonna to put to shame a lot of its competitors. I think this is definitely the best sounding vehicle in the segment, of course, if you don't count the other end models. Now opening up the trunk, you can see it's a traditional trunk and you get around 14.1 cubic feet of space. You can see Hyundai even added structural bracing back here uh, to give this car more of a stiffer feel. The seats do still fold down, it looks like. They actually do fold down, but that brace is gonna get in the way if you actually need to put taller items through there. Underneath here, you can see no spare tire, but you do get a fix a flat kit uh, and an air compressor, uh, which it looks like there's room for a spare tire, but Hyundai may have taken it out to, of course, save weight. So the outside of the Elantra N is certainly very polarizing from some, some angles, but let's go ahead and take a look at the interior. But before I do that, let me show you guys the key fob for the vehicle. You can see this is Hyundai's current intelligent access key. There's obviously no remote start because my tester is a manual, but you can see it has all the usual buttons. If you have access to the Hyundai Blue Link app, you should be able to lock and unlock this car, which I don't have access to it because it's a press vehicle. Now, opening the door, you can see um, this interior color combination is the only color available basically on the uh, Elantra and you can see you have these standard sports seats which they just introduced on the um, Veloster and which certainly looks good. They're very aggressively bolstered. They are just a four-way manual adjustment which is surprising. I do wish this car offered a power driver's seat at least where it allowed me to make the f this part of this angle of the seat go up and down. Only allows you to basically make this part of the seat go up and down, which I find this to be a little bit uncomfortable. The seats themselves are definitely a little bit hard, uh, but these end logos do light up at night. It makes for a really beautiful looking interior along with the performance blue stitching that you'll find on the seats, on the steering wheel, on the shifter and whatnot. And then you can see on the door panel, you have some suede Alcantara with this interesting design. Unfortunately, this is a hard touch plastic material, slightly padded over here, but this should have been stitched in leather. So there is some cost cutting on this interior. Uh, the Bose stereo system that my tester comes standard with also does sound pretty decent for, in case you get tired of listening to that lovely engine. Now getting inside, you can see this car only has like five inches of ground clearance. So it's a little bit of a low step in height, obviously, but getting in and shutting the door, the door has a relatively solid sounding thunk. I've definitely heard worse in this segment, but you can see the interior just certainly makes a great first impression. It looks nice. And then when you want to start it up, uh, it's a manual. The button is right here where you'd expect it to be. Put the clutch in. 
And then you can see all the Elantra ends come standard with the dual 10 inch displays, which is, which is certainly uh, very, very nice. I like the way the displays look here. It's very Mercedes-esque. I like how this is the bigger display. You can see there's what it looks like with Apple CarPlay uh, loaded up, which it's not wireless. If you guys go for an Elantra N line, it does have wireless CarPlay because it has the older and smaller eight inch touchscreen. But for some reason, Hyundai still doesn't do a wireless on their bigger screens, which is really, really frustrating. In terms of the dashboard, you can see this is a soft touch injection molded plastic. Plastic, although it feels a little bit cheap. This is a hard touch plastic and then it's all again hard touch plastic over here. Large grab handle which this should have been kind of wrapped in leather along with the uh, traditional handbrake here. This is wrapped in some cheap polyurethane material and it should have been leather wrapped because it's something that you touch. At least the steering wheel does look nice. You can see very thick rim, not a flat bottom design, a lot of end buttons here that allow you to go to your N1 and N2 custom modes. There's your active rev matching on and off switch, which is nice. The horn sounds a little bit puny and dinky, kind of similar to the Civic Si horn, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, but you can see the steering wheel itself is manual tilt and telescoping, offers a good amount of adjustability, so you can get comfortable. You just have to make sure you have to try the seats out to see if they uh, work for you. Now, in terms of driver assistance, this car does have active lane keep assist, automatic emergency braking, but no adaptive cruise or highway driving assist. I don't believe Hyundai offers that on their end models, even on the dual clutch model. I'll have to double check that. You can see no paddles on the wheel because this is the manual, no need for it. Uh, and then over here you can see you can adjust this to be a split screen even with CarPlay, but you can see uh, this is with the, uh, going back to the factory display, this is Hyundai's navigation system, which is nice that it comes standard with nav. It certainly works well. Um, it's really easy to use. The graphics look good. I wouldn't say it's better versus the Honda Civic Si. Honda has really stepped up their game with their nine inch display, but this is a bigger display and it also has a more you know tech focused look. So I do like the presentation of it. I just think the lack of CarPlay that's wireless really is kind of a deal breaker for me and in terms of a few other people as well. Now you can see over here you have dual zone climate control, which is nice. It's an upgrade versus the single zone that you find, I believe in the N line in a Civic Si. No wireless, or are you, I'm sorry, you do have, it looks like a wireless phone charging pad there, which is something you don't get in the Civic Si. You also have two USB charging ports over there, just USB-A. The manual transmission you can see, has pretty good throws. I actually like the throws. The clutch also is nice and light, but not too light, which is great. Uh, your drive mode selectors over here, there's eco, normal, and sport. And then you can also push the end mode here to go into a full on end mode where you can see it changes the way the gauges look. There's also an end custom mode, a custom one, and a custom two, which you can kind of custom tailor to your liking. So that's all really great. I love how Hyundai is super, um, adjustable with that. This basically comes from Albert Bierman, who used to work for BMW. There's a full on end, end pages here where it shows you basically all the information you might need to know. There's also uh, where you can adjust the custom one and custom two. You can also activate the launch control, show a G meter, and then you can adjust the launch control here and change the shift light and whatnot. So that's all really great stuff. If I put the vehicle into reverse here, you can see there's your backup camera. Um, no parking sensors, but the, the screen looks pretty good. No 360 camera, but it's not really needed. It does have two or three different views, uh, which is nice. But overall, the tech in this car certainly is up to par. Uh, if you're looking for features like cooled seats or power seats, you cannot find that or a heads up display. You might find that on some competitors. Not here, you just have three level heated seats. Um, no cooled seats, which I would have liked to see Hyundai do. I'll push that button here, you can see it brings up the backup camera anyway. And then you can see over here, some piano black plastic trim, cup holders, and then a padded armrest here with a decent amount of storage. Now, in terms of the glove box, you can see it just cheaply falls. It's not damped or lined with felt, but it's a really good bin size. Uh, over here, you can see no LED map lighting, which would have been nice. You do have a little bit of cabin lighting in here that is LED, which you can kind of change the color and customize. So that's definitely improvement over the Civic Si. I mentioned earlier the seats, try them out before you buy them. I find them to be a little bit hard and I wish they adjusted in more different ways. Uh, and I also wish they were cooled. But overall, the cabin is full of cheap materials, but at least you have a good sound system, you have good tech, um, and it also is really easy to see out of, and it's also really to, uh, easy to live with uh, in terms of a daily basis with this interior. Looking at the back seat, you can see the Elantra N actually has one of the most spacious back seats in the segment because of that long wheelbase. Hyundai says you have around 38 inches of legroom back here, which makes it a couple inches more versus the GLI and the Civic Si. You can see getting back here, at five foot seven, I just have a ton of legroom. This is where I'd have the seat to drive. Um, no flat floor here, so that is gonna take up your space, but there's just a ton of room to stretch in here and you know get comfortable. Materials back here are the same as the front, cheap plastic, but it is padded over here, or it is suede over here. And this actually is hard touch plastic, so it is an upgrade of the front where this is actually soft touch. 
um, so they did skimp a little bit more. This material here looks really cheap. Uh, the window controls, you can see also, not one touch for the rear, just for the front driver window, so it feels a little bit cheap. No rear seat air vents, which you don't find in the competition unless you're looking at something like the GTI. No USB charging ports, no power outlets or anything, and no armrest back here. That was a surprise. That's a little bit of a huge cost-cutting measure that I don't like, but you can see same suede Alcantara here, and there is a little bit of blue stitching, although the blue stitching is not over here. It's on the side of the seat. So that's, uh, again, a little bit more cost-cutting. But uh, without the sunroof, there is a good amount of headroom in here. And at least you do have all that extra legroom space, which should could be important for those of you who need to actually put adults or a car seat back here. All right, so here we are in the most performance-oriented Elantra ever. Remember, Hyundai first tried their hand at this back in 2017 with the Elantra Sport. I was actually pretty impressed when I first drove that car. However, the Elantra N takes it to the next level. And I will, what I love about this car is it slots neatly between like a GTI and a Golf R or a Civic Si and the upcoming Civic Type R in terms of power, but it's priced more along the lines of that GTI or um, a Civic Si. I mean, at $32,000, it is a screaming deal for the base version. And now that we're spending a full week with this model with the manual transmission in this beautiful performance blue color, I've had a chance to drive a lot of the competition already. Uh, so I'm really excited to spend a full week with this vehicle and see what it's like. Uh, when I last drove this car, I, was, I spent most of my time out on a track, so I wasn't able to actually feel what it was like on the road to live with. And let me tell you, the chassis of this car feels the most composed out of all the three N models. It has the best ride and handling balance uh, because this is the newer N3 platform versus the Kona N and the Veloster N. So right off the bat there, I'm really liking this. Now, in terms of zero to 60, the manual is not the ideal option, but we'll go ahead and activate the launch control and we'll try it out and see what we can get. Wow, zero to 60 in 5.86 seconds. 5.86 puts it a little bit slower versus the Subaru WRX that I tested with a manual, which was like 5.64, and the Golf R, which is 5.3 with the manual. Remember, the Golf R is the all-wheel drive model, the, or is the all-wheel drive version. The uh, manual is gonna slow it down versus the dual clutch by about a half a second. But 5.86 is significantly faster than competitors like the Volkswagen a GLI with a manual transmission, and of course the Honda Civic Si. The Si is the slowest in the segment at like five or 7.1 seconds. 5.86 is pretty impressive for a car like this. Remember, this thing is front wheel drive, so it's not gonna be able to launch quite as well as some of the all wheel drive versions. And then if you guys want the quickest accelerating Elantra N, you're gonna want the dual clutch model because I drove that model uh, already, and I also drove it in the Kona N, and it's a very good powertrain in the Kona N. Uh, and I got like a low five second range in the Kona N. So that's something to keep in mind. If you want the quickest acceleration, you need to make sure you go for the dual clutch model. Nice pops and crackles from the exhaust. And I don't have to shift into third to get to 60 in this car. That's what I like about it. In the SI, I have to shift to third. That run there, I'm going slightly more uphill. That was a 6.5 second run. This car, easily sub six seconds, but 5.86 I think is a really respectable number uh, considering that the front wheel drive model or the front wheel drive of this car certainly uh, is gonna you know, be a downfall in terms of this much power and torque. This car puts the power down pretty well. It's got that end corner covering uh, limited slip differential, but it's an E limited slip diff. But like in terms of torque steer, I can put my foot down here in third and listen to that exhaust. This car sounds freaking awesome. It's better sounding versus the SI, versus the GTI, versus the Golf R, versus the WRX. It's got active rev matching. <laughs> Every time you let off the throttle and you're like in that high gear, it makes pops and crackles and burbles from the exhaust. <laughs> Listen to that. Why can't all the other manufacturers do the same kind of noise that Hyundai's doing? They really understand what we want as enthusiasts from a sport compact like this, especially at this price point. And the factory exhaust in this car is just absolutely insane. It's perfect. It's got active exhaust. So if you turn off, if you get out of this end mode that I'm in right now, which is putting everything in like maximum attack mode, uh, it certainly is surprisingly quiet 
when you have it in those quieter modes. But I have to say, the steering in this car is probably the biggest surprise. Hyundai has really learned, of course, from you know Albert Bierman, who's been the chief you know performance guy at Hyundai for a while now. Floored here in first. Oh. Don't really feel anything in terms of torque steer. Uh, there is wheel hop, obviously, when you you know launch it from a start. The launch control in the manual model doesn't work all that great. I mean, I had it activated there, and it was supposed to hold the revs at 2,500, and it wasn't. I don't know why it wasn't doing that. Um, but I basically just launched it around 2,500 on my own, and then just tried to dump the clutch, which, if I had a little bit more, you know, of a consistent prep surface where I could launch this car all the time, I would try to see well, how I would get it like there, but honestly, that's about as good as it's, as it's gonna get if you guys are trying to do that on the road. But again, it's got a really slick shifting manual. I love the rev matching. I love the, the engine. It just has so much power and character and torque everywhere. Floored here in first again. <laughs> There's a little bit of chirp from the tires. I also like the shift light, the beep that it makes also lets you know that you need to shift. Although if you can't hear the engine, you're just, you know, you're not paying attention. Uh, but the steering in this car, so heavy, so direct, but also tons of feel from the front tires. I know exactly what they're doing. Uh, and the suspension stays nice and firm and planted. The car itself just feels so playful. It feels even more serious to drive versus the Civic Si, versus a Volkswagen GLI, which are a little bit softer than this car. But you know what, what's surprising is with the adaptive dampers that the end model comes with, the ride quality actually doesn't beat me up. Like I can have the car in full on end mode right now and it feels firm, but it's not overly harsh. I mean, it's a tad harsh if you're gonna compare it to something like the new Acura Integra, which I just drove, um, but it's not bad. It's, it's actually really good. And if I want, I can put the drive mode here into an eco or a normal mode. And once I go into this normal mode here, you can really feel everything kind of tailored back. They, uh, I'll shift into a higher gear here. The exhaust gets a little bit quieter. The ride quality gets a little bit softer. The seats on the other hand, I will say they look good, but I I think they're a little too stiff for me. I don't like the, the longer distance comfort. It's just not, it doesn't feel great to me, uh, which I was hoping the seats would be a little bit more comfortable. But overall, um, Try the seats out, make sure you like them. But in terms of noise, once the exhaust goes into that quieter mode, it's relatively quiet in here. On the highway, it is a little bit loud in terms of road noise. Uh, so you don't buy this car for refinement. It's not a luxury car. Uh, and the interior, while it does look good, it is full of a lot of cheap materials. That's something that Hyundai, I noticed, cut corners. On this generation of Elantra, you've got hard touch plastic in places where I wish it was soft touch or I wish they put leather on this touch point here like the handbrake. But the steering wheel at least feels good. Uh, I like how there's a big end button here. There's a rev auto on, uh, auto and off switch for the uh, active rev matching, which I like is right there. It's big and red. If you get the automatic, that's the NGS, the N grin shift mode, uh, which is definitely nice. But then if you want to switch it into end mode, just push this button here. It goes on to full on end mode, which is fantastic. I love how. <laughs> oh my God, that's, that's freaking fantastic. I love it. I love how playful this car is, how serious it is, how surprisingly drivable it is as a daily. And in terms of fuel economy, I averaged around 22 MPG in mostly city driving. On the highway, this thing will do about 29 pretty easily, um, which obviously a Civic Si is gonna be more efficient, but for the extra power this engine gives you, I think it's a worthy trade-off. It's something to, to keep in mind, obviously, if you're, if you're gonna be daily driving this car and you're not gonna be beating on it all day long, it, it will get decent gas mileage. Uh, you just have to make sure that you're you know, comfortably lighter on the throttle and driving a little bit more conservatively. So after spending a full week with the 2022 Hyundai Elantra N, this car certainly will prove to all the enthusiasts out there who are Hyundai haters. This car is a serious turbocharged sport compact car that will put all of its competitors to shame, especially when it comes to sound, especially when it comes to horsepower, and comes to the chassis and the steering tuning, and of course the price. This car is seriously the best interpretation of the N models because of the newer chassis that it's on. It has a really surprisingly good ride and handling balance. Well, it's not super really harsh like you can find it to be in the Veloster N and the Kona N where the ride quality can be too harsh even in the comfort settings. And the interior, while it is a little bit cheap in terms of the materials, I do like the tech features that the end model gives you. I would like to see Hyundai offer the sunroof on the manual model if you guys want a sunroof. I don't wanna to have to have to go to the dual clutch, which the dual clutch itself, I drove that last year, 
I like the dual clutch. I also liked it in the Kona N, but I have to say the six speed manual is an enticing proposition. It makes this car super unique. And of course, in a world where the manuals are dying, save the manuals. I have to applaud Hyundai, of course, for making this car standard with a six speed manual transmission. Now, of course, there are so many competitors in this vehicle and it's really hard to price this car within its competitors because for $28,000, you can get a Civic Si. Uh, for like $2,000 more, you can get an Acura Integra. Technically, the Integra is 36 grand if you guys want the manual transmission. The Honda Twins are gonna be less expensive, obviously, versus the uh, Elantra N, but the Elantra N has so much more power. If you're gonna compare this car to a GTI, this is also more expensive. A GLI is right around the same price, but keep in mind, once you add in options to those models where it, it kind of matches the equipment of this car, although Hyundai doesn't offer a lot of the premium options that you might find on the VWs, uh, the VW twins are gonna be a little bit more expensive. The Subaru WRX is an interesting competitor because the base model is cheaper than this car, but if you get a premium model, which is equipped more like the N, it's around the same price and you do get all wheel drive. However, I'd argue that the chassis, the steering, and the sound, and the engine is better in this car and the transmission versus the Subaru. And really, you're only gonna get the Subaru if you like the styling and you must have the all-wheel drive. Could Hyundai have made this car all-wheel drive? Yes, it would have been interesting if they did. I especially think they should have put it on the Kona N, but it does keep the cost down. It also keeps the weight down. It makes this one of the best handling front-wheel drive cars that I've ever driven. It feels a lot like a modern-day Mazda Speed 3. If Mazda, if Mazda offered a Speed 3, I imagine it would feel a lot like this car, but sadly, Mazda Mazda is so obsessed with Mazda Premium. I can't even compare this car to a Mazda 3 Turbo. It's just way too soft and way uh, less sharp uh, versus something like this segment of vehicle. But basically at a starting price of 32,105 or 150, it is about $500 less expensive than a Veloster N and a couple grand cheaper than a Kona N. And at 33,500 as equipped as with my tester with the Performance Blue and the Destination Charge, it is an absolute steal. If you guys want the automatic, it's an extra $1,500. So all in, you're looking at around 36 for a fully loaded version, which I think is a great price. Remember, you can get something like the Acura Integra for that same price, but the Acura is definitely a lot more luxurious and nicer on the inside uh, and a little bit softer. This is a little bit more serious, but also not quite as feature rich on the inside and not as luxurious for sure, but it's certainly a unique proposition. I think if you guys are shopping for a sport compact car, the Elantra N should definitely make it to the very top of your list. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2022 Hyundai Elantra and if you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.